All right, let's start with now graphing relations. Well, let's start with this one. And probably the best thing to do is look for intercepts. Let x be 0. If x is 0, we'd have y squared equals negative 6. Something squared is always positive, unless you're doing imaginary, and that won't be on a graph. So we won't have anything there, so there's not possible. If we put in 1, we'd still have a negative, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5. This is still negative, and we can't have y squared in the end. But if we put in 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, and 0 squared. So we finally get a point. If we put in, uh, let's see, I'm going to put in 10 next. And you'll see why. Well, I, let's, let's do 7 first. 7. 7 minus 6 is 1. What squared is 1? Well, that would be 1 or negative 1. Now, if I put in 10, if I put 2 and 3, I get square roots of funny numbers. And you can figure out what they are in decimal. But 10, 10 minus 6 is 4. What squared is 4? And that would be 2 or minus 2. So you can see how the, it's doing uh, both positive and negative things and, uh, for the y. So that's going to be symmetric with the x-axis. Let's kind of just look at what we've got so far. It doesn't, x can't be 0, so there's nothing here. It can't be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And it can, uh, it, but it can be 7. At 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we get, oh, it can be 6, and we get 0. 7, we get 1 or negative 1. At 8, 9, and finally 10, we get 2 and negative 2. And so we're starting to get this sideways parabola. Okay. We you can put in uh, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine. You can figure out all those and get decimal values for it and make the graph for it. That's what this is going to look like. All right. Well, let's take a look at the next one I have here, which is x squared a y squared minus x squared equals four. Okay, let's go ahead again and try to do intercepts. So if I let x be 0, y squared equal 4 would mean it could be 2 or negative 2 when x is 0. So I got two intercepts there for the uh, y axis. Let's do the x intercepts. So if I put in 0 for y, I get negative of x squared equals 4. If I divide by the negative 1, I get x squared equals negative 4. Can't happen. No y-intercepts. It doesn't cross, or no x-intercepts. It doesn't cross the x-axis. So this curve can't touch the x-axis. Okay, so now let's put in some other points. Um, let's put in 1 for x. 1 squared is 1. And then that would be minus 1, so I add 1 over there. So y squared is 5, so it would be the square root of 5. But it could also be the negative square root of 5. But you notice that if I put in 1, it's the same thing as if I put in negative 1. I'll get the square root of 5 or square root of negative 5. If, uh, square, negative square root of 5. Now those are not really pretty numbers. Let's see if we can put in something in here that gives us something nicer. Let's see, what squared, let's see, if I put in 2, that would make 4, added to 4 is 8, that's not real pretty. 3 is 9, added to 4 is 13, not real pretty. 4 is 16, plus 4 is 20, I'm not getting real pretty numbers. Uh, 5 is 25, plus 4 is 29, okay, so I'm not getting much, so let's just go ahead and put in 2, which is 4. Negative 4, so I'll add 4 to both sides, and I get 8. So I'm going to have the square root of 8. And for 2, I'm going to get negative square root of 8. 
And also for negative 2, I'd get the square root of 8. And for uh, negative 2, negative square root of 8. All right, so let's now put on what we do know so far. We get 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. And so that's symmetric with the x-axis, and that's because it doesn't care what y is positive or negative. Okay, if we put in 1, we get the square root of 5, which is 2 point something, 2.2 2 something, and negative square root of 5. But uh, we also get that for negative 1, those same values. And if I put in 2, I get the square root of 8, which is not quite 3 yet. And down here, and up here, and down here, and all those places. And so I'm getting something that looks like this. And that's a hyperbola going this way. Opposite direction from what we had in class. Okay. I'm taking a little bit of time here to put on the labeling on the axes and the, for the points. You must do that or I can't give you credit for it because I don't know what your units are. Okay. This one. All right. It looks like it's going to be symmetric with the y-axis, symmetric with the x-axis, but let's just go ahead and find intercepts. If I make x be 0, 3 goes into 36 12 times, so it would be the square root of 12 and negative square root of 12. If I put 0 in for the y, I'll divide by 2 and that's 18, so x would be the square root of 18 or negative square root of 18. Now let's see if we put something else in, like, um, well, let's do 2 for x. So that's 4 times 2 is 8. 8 from 36 would be 28. 28 divided by 3 is a little over 9, so the square root is going to be a little over 3. 3 plus. And for negative 2, it would be 3 plus. Won't care what the x is. And it could also be, since we're doing the square root, it could be uh, 2 with a negative 3, a little over 3, and with a negative 2 would be negative 3, a little over it. So let's just see what we've got so far. 0, square root of 12 is 3 point something, and and when square root of 18, square root of 16 is 4, so this is a little over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, a little over 4. It's 0, and a little, little over negative 4. It's 0. And for 2, it's up at close to 3, just a little over 3, and a little over negative 3 a little bit below negative 3. And at negative 2, it does the same things. And we're starting to get this. And if you, you're having trouble to seeing that this is going to be an ellipse, keep plugging in other points and finding those. Okay? Finish your labeling. Make sure units are on the graph before you Stop. Okay? So that's graphing relations.